tell me what to say. Hello and welcome to another exciting new episode of Sirius Nivich with Esbiri Brown and Gourmet Pens. Gourmet Pens. Gourmet Pens. Why do we even have an opening thing if you if you're just gonna do this? Okay. Sorry. Today we'll have a look at she sniffs pens and she tastes ink. Now this is the Delta... That's a, that's a long name, so we have it... Okay. The Delta Vespucci Ancore Argento Wood Limited Edition Fountain Pen. This pen was uh, sent to me by Bryant from Chatterley Luxuries, and it will be returned to Bryant. So we're not so, keeping this pen? A, we're not keeping this, and B, this is not a giveaway. Just so you know, because we often give them away, we would not give this. We're away. also not paid for this review. No, we're actually also Except not for. asked to do a serious nibbage, but we thought it was an interesting yeah. pen. So you guys we might enjoy. We would do it now. What were first your impressions? First impressions? Now, uh, because this came from the U.S., there's actually no box because it was a lot easier to ship that way. So understand this. Um, Typically, have, these are large boxes with uh, all kinds of stuff. I have a pen. Well, why don't you talk about your first impressions first? Well, my first impressions were... Uh, why don't you show the pen? This looks very interesting. Yeah. It's a wooden pen. Uh, it's not solid wood. It's actually wood covering. Can you hold this for one mm -hmm. sec? Uh, you may be able to see... Uh, yeah, you it's can. a little hard to see, but you can see that it's a material with a thin layer of wood around it. And if I understand correctly, that wood was actually made from naval ships from the Italian Navy. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a special type of wood. And it, it really has the, 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 the quality of wood. It feels like wood, it smells like it, uh, and definitely looks like it. So my first impressions were, this looks like a Delta Dolce Vita on steroids. Something happened to it, uh, it's, it's made of wood. It's like a minion that went evil, yeah, but not really evil. Uh, and it just looks cool. It's a very nice looking pen. Now I'm not an enormous fan of wood pens in general, um, but I thought this one looked really, really cool. What about you? Uh, okay, but well, my first impressions, it um, it was shipped in a two pen pouch and it was zippered closed. And the first thing I noticed was the smell. I have a really good sense of smell, which is really good. Um, so I could smell it before I even unzipped it, and I was like, "What is that?" It smells magical and delicious, and it's not um, like a like a fake wood smell. It's like a aromatic, delicious phenol cedar pine good not pine actually but more like a sandalwood vanilla musk type smell anyway so good so i was really excited about the smell and honestly i just like sniffed the pouch and i was like oh yeah that was very milk i feel like serious olfaction with esbiary brown and, and it's and, and it still smells and <laughs> it's really exciting don't, don't give people a bad example by sniffing them. But I don't know what it is about that, but it, to me that just like adds a whole element of elegance to it. So anyway, my first impressions were that the smell is fantastic. And it was interesting because I have never seen a wood Delta pen before. And uh, it does look like an over, a Delta Dolce Vita oversized, like the one with the orange that you usually see, but in wood. So. It's 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 a model that I do generally like because I have the undersized version of it, and um, so I, I did find it nice. But mostly, I was really interested in the smell. Now, uh, what as she is sniffing pens, what? let's discuss what makes it special. Well, this is a um, a Chatterley Pens exclusive, so you can only get it from ChatterleyLuxuries.com. And there's only 25 of them. And this is number 7. And just so you know, it's currently on sale. So the uh, original price is, I believe, eight ninety five, and it's currently on sale for five fifty. Unless you pick a stub nib, and then it's a, a $30 extra. But um, you can get a, I think, fine, medium, broad, and then stub. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, 
uh, I think that's what makes it special. Yeah, but I think you what makes it special. The, I mean, what makes it finish. special, definitely, I mean, Chatelier Luxuries, they, they do a lot of this, right? They have special pens in collaboration with, with Delta, Visconti, etc. Um, and I think, so that's that's one thing that makes it special. It's, it's a, um, uh, an exclusive pen. Of course, there's only 25 of them. That's really not a lot. This is number seven. So yes. for those of you who like number seven, this is going back to Chatterley Luxuries. And, yeah, so if uh, you want to hold the pen that we reviewed, then you can do that. Or if you want number seven, you can get that. And I think that uh, what makes this really special is that it's made of wood. And that at least has a wood covering because you don't see that many wooden pens. So I think all of that makes it kind of uh, makes, it makes it special. So this is made from the wood of a school vessel that's used for the training of the Italian... Navy Academy that was launched in 1931. That's pretty cool. So that is that is pretty cool. And no, this is not algae. <laughs> it is um, it's just part of the wood grain, I guess. Just the color of it. Uh, anyway. What was your writing experience like? Well, I've been blabbing a lot, so I always blab. So you blab. No, you go ahead because I just did the wood thing. Okay, you just did the wood thing. I like to. Talk uh, about this has a medium nib, and um, the writing experience was interesting because. First of all, um, it is it is a huge nib. Yeah, it's really big. Um, yeah. Is it a number eight? It's a number system? eight, yeah. And uh, it's a quite smooth writer, extremely juicy. And I think as a result of the wetness, it runs itself dry. But not unreasonably, so not like after a paragraph. I, I wrote... We flushed it, cleaned it out, and um, I, I wrote several pages and then it ran dry. So, yeah, it's. I it's, mean, do people really write several pages and then? Well, I mean, I mean I it, it's very simple. It shouldn't run dry, but yeah. we don't know. I mean, th th that's always the issue when you review pens. It could be a, s a specific issue with just this pen, and all the rest writes fine. I agree with you, though. It did not run dry. I've had definitely had pens that run dry after almost half a page. This one took a lot longer. We did flush it again after that with a little bit of dishwashing detergent, and that, that did seem to help. I think that, that made it flow a bit better. Yeah, definitely. And if it was my pen, uh, we would have heat set the feed, because it is an ebonite feed yeah. and stuff. But, I mean, it's not... It what, looks like it's it's well aligned and well what, set. But, what, I mean, I mean, what I'm saying is we would have, we would have tuned it, but yeah. it's not our nib, so we didn't want to change it, of course. No. But uh, also, definitely... when we do these, we don't tune the nibs before the videos, right? Yeah. Um, and I also think it's not a terrible experience. No, it means. wasn't. But what but I what I felt was that, as a medium, it was very juicy. And uh, I, I think that's why it ran itself dry. Yeah. I think it's because it's such a wet writer. And um, personally, I like that because I like really juicy nibs. Um, I think it makes the... With this one, it made the inks, the sheen look really good and the shading look really good. Um, but the it it did run dry after a few pages. I drafted my reviews by hand with this uh, with this pen, and it ran dry once. And the review the written review was actually quite long. So, um, but you, you know, touched the page and it picked up immediately. So it's not like it completely sucked all the ink out of the feed and then that was it. Um, I I guess it was just that it just. Just air exchange, maybe. Yeah, something like that. I think. But anyway. What did you love about it? Wait, I'm not done. Oh, I it's part of my writing experience. This oh. is important for people with smaller hands. Um, this is a sterling silver section. Uh, it is very. It's it's quite thick. So for me, th uh, this size of pen is a bit uncomfortable to use for longer writing sessions. So, although I love the juiciness of the nib and how smooth it was uh it, it's tough to use this kind of pen for a long time so yeah what about your writing experience i thought my writing my writing experience well you explained very well about the the, the dryness issue yeah uh, yeah Sorry. this is a fat pen so if you really like fat sections then this is really good for you it's terrifying um, don't do that is it no it's yeah. uh, if you don't like fat sections then you probably <laughs> you probably shouldn't do this um but this is what that's what this series of pens is known for. Delta Delta Vita, Dolce Vita is the exact same thing. The oversized, then I mean, uh, they're really big. They're, they're they're big. It's not so much length, but it's girth. Um, 
I'll refrain from making further comments about that. But in any case, it, you, you notice that. You notice yeah. that it, it is more time even for me to, to hold. I mean, as you can see, I can't even really put my, my fingers together. Uh, it's, it's just big. Uh, and in a way, that's fun because it really writing with an oversized pen is fun. It's it's very beefy. It's 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 very I would say masculine almost. Yeah. Uh, and and that's nice. But if you have smaller hands, it's very simple. This is probably not the pen for you. It's pretty tiring. Yeah. And, and I I was quite fatigued after writing. Added to that, it it is a piston filler. It is a bit top heavy, so it it definitely has some weight to it. And you have the wood, which you can apparently smell. Uh, it, that, that that makes it heavy. But the nib is great. Can you smell it? Probably not. <laughs> Um, yes, it's it's a big heavy pen. Yes, the nib ran dry a little bit, um, but when it does write, it writes beautifully, mm -hmm. very smooth, very juicy, mm -hmm. lovely glides across the paper. Yeah. So in that regard, I think that my, my writing experience was was actually really good. Yeah. Yeah. What do you love about it? Uh, I absolutely love the smell. You you may have mentioned. That. I I, sorry, I'm really weird. Um, it's such a lovely smell. I think it's, again, it's not like a perfumey wood smell. It's just like a true wood. And it's just really nice, like a, like an exotic, delicious wood smell. So I, I really like that. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and again, although the nib did run dry on me that one time in the longer writing session, um, I still enjoy the writing experience of the nib because, like he said, it is very smooth, it is very juicy. So, and again, I like really wet writing nibs. So I think this with a stub or something would be really fantastic. Yeah, be and I think the stub would mm, possibly regulate the ink better somehow. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, I, think, I don't know if their feeds are different. But, I don't know. I don't. Um, and um, I think it's a cool looking pen. So I'm not, I, I mean, I get, like, like he said, he's not really huge on wood pens. I don't really have a lot of wood pens, I don't think. Um, I think this, this finish is very attractive because it's kind of like a bamboo look, like yeah. with the, yeah, the color is. and stuff. Yeah. It's kind of a cool color scheme, like the, the cool wood color with the silver. Um, I like that, but, uh... I also think the engraving on it, yeah, is, it it's very that. clean. The engraving is, is very clean, very sharp. I like so, that So, I mean, too. It's, it's really well defined. Making I it think very, this very engraving neat. looks better on the wood than it does in the resin version of yeah. the, the yeah. Dolce Vita. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anything you hate? What do you love? Well, pretty much what you said. Very cool looks. Uh, in principle, good writing experience. Again, as long as the nib doesn't run dry. Very neat that it's a piston filler, so this is not unlike the Delta Dolce Vita, which is either uh, converter or eyedropper filled. This is a, a, an, um, a piston filler. Of course, the nice thing about that is, you know, built-in ink capacity, it's easy to use. Very nice that the section is not wood, that would probably be very comfortable to hold, but if you dip it in the ink, it will stain, so it's very smart to, to make this uh, silver or metal, at least. Um, you know, it's it's that type of stuff. The, the eye for detail, I think, is is it's good. The pen is well put together, and indeed, I I really like this um, uh, the the engraving in the wood. Very clean, very sharp, yeah, very crisp yeah, it looking. Yeah, looks really cool. It's it's, it's, it's very neat. modern looking. That, yeah. that engraving. And it's it's just good, well balanced, very nicely made pen. Shall I go over what I don't like about it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, to be honest, not so much. There was that, that writing issue where it ran dry. And again, that could be just this pen, could be, I mean, uh, I don't know, whatever, wrong ink. Uh, I, I just don't know. And again, after cleaning, it did improve. Um, I like it. I, I, I think it's just really well put together. It's, I mean, it's, it's clean. The, the section and the, the barrel it's are flush. Smooth, yeah. It's well done, well put together. Uh, you can post it <laughs> if really you big. want to, it's really big. But I don't really see anything beyond the writing issue that I really didn't like. Well, yeah, for me there was the the writing issue and yeah, it runs dry and I wanted to tell you about that. It ran dry. I wanted to tell you about that just, you know, for like well, disclosure. It is important. important. Um, I think one small issue for me is that there's no ink window. Yeah, that's a and good point. And it's such a heavy pen, you can't even like gauge how much ink is in there by like weight or anything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a good point. Um, you can't really guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, 
at, at its full price, it's fairly expensive, but I think at the sale price, it's m more within the range that I would consider looking at it. Um, well, that goes into would you buy it, so go ahead. Oh, yeah, sorry. Would you buy it? Okay, so full price was eight ninety five US, and the sale price is five eighty or five fifty. dollars sorry. Um, to be honest, this, this is not a pen I would have, if I walked past it in a store, I would look at. And it's not because it's ugly, it's just because it's not the kind of pen that generally attracts mm -hmm. me. Uh, so, this is another reason that reviewing pens is fun, right? Because you get to look at pens you never would really look at. Um, at the sale price, I would consider it, but not with a medium. Because to me, the medium is just a plain medium. Uh, I've used a, the Delta Broad, and it's kind of stubby, which I really like. And I'm itching to try their actual stub, so... I would probably go with a broad or a stub. Would I buy this particular model though? For me, no. And the reason is because it's too big. It's just uncomfortable for me. So I would, the use I would get out of it would not make up for the cost of it for me. If that makes sense. Although it smells so good. I would not buy it either. And that has nothing to do with poor performance or anything. That just has to do with the fact that I'm not a big fan of wooden pens. Uh, it's definitely well put together, it's well made, and yes it's an expensive pen, but there's only 25 of them. It has the wood covering, which is something that requires a lot of skill to do, um, because it's, it's basically a, a pen body with a thin layer of wood sort of veneer around it. Um, and you will pay for that, it's that simple. Uh, it's also, uh, I'm fairly certain that all of these highlights were actually silver. Yes, so, they are. Yeah, yeah, so, silver. I mean, that adds to the cost as well. Uh, yeah, this is not a pen you buy with pocket change. It's that simple, but it's a highly limited edition. It's a, a special pen. Uh, it, it's well, I mean, there are people who, who collect uh, historical wood pieces yeah, and, exactly. and have pens made out of that and stuff. So, I mean, this would fall into that category. And this is not... A kit pen. Yeah, right? I think this With is one. very so, special type of pen. I think so too. And if you if you judge it for what it is, which is a collector piece, um, even though I would not buy it, I can see how this is worth the money. For sure. It smells so good. You may have mentioned that before. Now is it? Or is it not? Serious nibbage. Okay. Um, again, serious nibbage meter. Not serious. Serious. And there's just little ticks on there. Now, not there are... animals. It's not the tick, the, the insect. Now, there's no numbers because the serious nibbaging is not an exact science. It's very subjective. So we do not put numbers on purpose. Okay. Also, because it's hard to do that because, I mean, some pens are easier to determine if it's serious or not. Anyway. Um, okay. So for me, I'm going to put this uh, just about there so a little bit over half for me because it's uncomfortably large so I mean I to me I don't really get much out of the the size and stuff of it but it smells super good the medium is really juicy I really like that and it's uh, I mean it is a it is a Delta it is cool yeah. But I put a little bit higher. I, I like the size. Yeah. I like oversized pens. So for me, that adds a little bit to it. I think it's neatly made. Um, and also, I am absolutely certain that if you were to buy this, and it turns out you do have a flow issue, Brian will sort out the problem. Yes. His customer service is known to be excellent. So even if that happens... And he's a super nice guy. That. So, absolutely. I mean... Very knowledgeable. If you have so. an issue and if you're trying to pick a nib, you could also chat with him about what, what nib you like or what your handwriting is like or something and he'll help you out. Yeah, so I don't think that's that that shouldn't be really a major concern. And I think it's serious nibbage. And I sure. bet you when we send this back, he's going to have a look at it. So. Oh, yeah. So that's it. Now, what else could we buy if we would want a pen for about 550 approximately, but not this pen? Well, you could actually look at the regular Dolce Vita oversize. Um, you could look at a, I believe, an Omas Mylor. I guess yeah. it depends on what finish you're looking at, but maybe the pot, the Paragon, depending on the finish. You get, a, clearly, at, at such a relatively high price, you, you get into the range you of could a whole look bunch at, of pens. Uh, an M800. 
M800, M-800 some uh, some of the I think Mont a, a Mont Blanc 146 is even up in that range. So you, you really have a lot of options yeah, to pick from. So a lot of options in the also in oversize also with a piston. I mean there's, there's you you even much. have um, some of the some Nakayas are in that in that price range. So of 550 to six or 650 I believe. Some of the some of the models are in there. Anyway. Twenty two Lamy Safaris. <laughs> it's an option. How many Ahabs can you get with that? A lot. Ooh. Um so yeah. You have a lot of options at this price. That's about it. That's it. So we hope this was useful. Bryant, thanks a lot for uh, lending us the pen. We'll send it back to you straight away. So I'm done sniffing it. I probably sniffed all the smell yeah, out of it. Yeah, she's yeah, it's pr pretty much Anyway, uh, guys, we hope this was useful, and uh, we'll be glad to see you later. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>